Hi, this is Elliot Fishman. This is CTSS. These are interesting cases, and we want you to make the call. On each case, you will have one image. Tell me what you're thinking. I'll tell you what I'm thinking, and I'll tell you what the answer actually was. So without further ado, let's get started. Patient has back pain, and you see bilateral large adrenal masses. What could this be? Well, you could think about metastasis. That's a possibility. Adenomas are bilateral. These don't look like adenomas, so forget that. They're solid. What about pheochromocytomas? They can be bilateral in 10% of cases. But again, pheos are usually vascular. These aren't vascular, so that's not a good call. Uh, bleeds, that's a thought, but bleeds are usually high attenuation. I don't particularly like that, but bleeds can be bilateral. Lymphoma can be bilateral. Lymphoma gives large soft tissue masses, can look very much like metastasis. The biggest METs I see are melanoma and hepatoma. So this could be METs, but I also want to think about primary lymphoma. That gives me the differential, and that was primary adrenal lymphoma. If it said metastasis, hard to argue because primary adrenal lymphoma is uncommon. I should have also perhaps mentioned primary adrenal cortical carcinomas, but those are essentially never bilateral. Patient has abdominal pain and GI bleed. What do you see? Well, if you look to the left of midline and then you look in the left lower quadrant, you see a round mass that's enhancing. And enhancing mass in small bowel, first thing I think about are just tumors and then carcinoid tumors. Those are my two best ones. Carcinoids, I'm looking for something in the mesentery I don't see. You can think of other things like simple lyomyomas or possibilities. You can think about metastasis, though usually you might see some type of irregularity or bowel obstruction or infiltration. This is so perfectly round and smooth. You also need to think about some of the benign tumors, fibromas, uh, neurogenic tumors, and the like. I have to admit my best thought would have been a gist tumor, and I would have been wrong. This is a very unusual case of a schwannoma, but it's in the differential diagnosis. The patient has a GI bleed, and you see what appears to be a very vascular lesion in the patient's uh, junction of the duodenum and the jejunum. Yes, you can say a carcinoid tumor. Yes, you can say a gist tumor. Yes, you can say perhaps, oh, a adenocarcinoma, though it's usually not that vascular. The key thing, of course, is looking that we don't see the left kidney and we see some clips. So the patient's had a left nephrectomy. Give me a left nephrectomy. Give me a vascular small bowel tumor. I'm going to say metastatic renal cell carcinoma. Again, carcinoid and gist are in there, but when you're missing the kidney, you got to go with METs. You have to consider METs anyway, but this was metastatic renal cell to the duodenum. An excellent case. Patient with left upper quadrant pain. Okay, you make the call. Look at this, spleen. Spleen is big. Liver, textures are regular, but you have the coarse trabeculations in the spine. What gives you a big spleen? and bony changes. And if you look in the presacral space, there's soft tissue, which is really extramedullary hematopoiesis. So a big spleen, you can go through many things from leukemia to lymphoma to mononucleosis to sarcoidosis. The bony changes don't look like renal failure. They don't look like sickle cell disease. They don't look like metastasis. And what gives you extramedullary hematopoiesis? Then you go into the hematologic processes. We think about malignancies, but you got to think about thalassemia. And this was thalassemia with extramedullary hematopoiesis. So something rare, but you got to be thinking about thalassemia, particularly if you're in Italy, I guess. Patient has chest pain, and it was done through a lot of coronary artery disease. What do you see? Well, at the region, probably by the circumflex, you see a cystic lesion with rim calcification. What could this be? It's not a node. It's not an infarct. It's not a tumor. Something calcified can be an old hematoma or it's vascular. Obviously, you would have liked to see more images. The bright dot in the center is actually the vessel. And what are we dealing with? We're dealing with a 
coronary artery aneurysm. Just a great, great case of a coronary artery aneurysm which arose from the circumflex coronary artery. What you call in this case? Well, there's a mass or mass effect by the right coronary artery. You can see it's round, but you see the enhancement and the vessels are regular. This is, again, think about the last case I showed you. Think about what could this be? It's not a lymphoma infiltrating the coronary artery. I've seen that because this is too well defined and it's cystic. It's not going to be a pseudoaneurysm. This is going to be a coronary artery aneurysm. The most common vessel to be involved with coronary artery aneurysms is, in fact, the right coronary artery. Just a beautiful example. This patient has chest pain. So now you look at the aorta, it looks okay. You look at the rest of the heart, it looks okay. No pericardial effusion, no pleural effusions. But what's that coming off the left anterior descending coronary artery? That's a gigantic aneurysm. And what about the right coronary? There's another large aneurysm. What gives you multiple aneurysms? Well, you can think about atherosclerotic disease, though that doesn't give you multiple aneurysms. You think about collagen vascular disease, that's a possibility. Think about the Marfans, you think about the Ehlers Danlos. But the truth is, when you see large aneurysms, when they're multiple, there's only one thing you should be thinking about. Yes, it's an older patient, and I know this disease is usually younger patients, but you can pick them up for the first time as teenagers or patients in their 30s or 40s, and that's Kawasaki's disease. Kawasaki's disease is the classic disease with multiple coronary artery aneurysms. Patient has chest pain, what's the call? Well, when you think about anterior mediastinal mass, you're thinking about teratoma, thymoma, lymphoma, adenopathy, thyroid disease. Well, but this one is unique. Eccentric, calcification, and fat. When I see fat and calcification, whether it's the pelvis or the chest, I'm talking teratoma. This is not the look of lymphoma. This is not the look of thyroid. Thyroid, uh, large, substernal thyroid can give you calcification, but not the fat. And this surely isn't the appearance of lymphoma. This is a beautiful example of a teratoma, a mature teratoma at that. Hopefully you got that right. What about this case? Patchy infiltrates mass-like right up a lung. Diffuse nodular infiltrates right up a lung and to a lesser degree the left. And then you see a lot of adenopathy. Well, perhaps you're thinking this is malignancy. That's a thought. But the patient has fever. Well, patients with malignancy can have fever. But what else gives you adenopathy, smooth adenopathy at that, and nodules in the lung and mass effect. Well, again, you could go with lymphoma. That would be a good thought. But you also need to consider infection. TB can give you adenopathy with masses. They're usually not a big mass like that, but it can, and it does give you these micronodules. But the other thing you need to think about, mass, mass like infiltrate, airspace filling, lots of adenopathy is sarcoidosis. Again, differentiating sarcoid and lymphoma just based on imaging can be somewhat tricky. This was a wonderful example of pulmonary sarcoid with mediastinal adenopathy as well. Just a great case. This patient had chest pain following dinner. There's something in the esophagus distally. The esophagus is dilated. There's some fat and soft tissue. Now, if I gave you the sagittals, it might be helpful. But what this is, is not a dissection. The order looks good. Everything looks good. The mediastinum looks good. What this is is something in the esophagus. So it's something the patient ate. This is classic for being obstructed by a piece of steak. And in this case, the steak had just too much fat. And it's a common thing often associated with infection. A patient literally choking to death by obstruction of the esophagus by a piece of steak. There's the sagittal view really showing you lots of fat. My recommendation, get good steak, trim it, don't eat all that fat. Oh, boy. To everyone, this is our first test of you make the call. You see two images, one screen, give a differential, give your thoughts, and we'll see you next time. Bye. 
If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel to be notified about new videos. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you around soon.